Ça peut être pas fait, si on vous montre ça. While we're letting the little ones run up top, I've got a grand announcement to make. We have a new, more new members to the church. Can you agree? Stand up. I'm going to tell you what, she's also gracious enough to let us use her pool in her home here a while back to do it for a baptism. She'd been with us for quite a while and she finally decided that she's going to camp with us forever. And I thank you, Jenny. And the next one is a young man you just heard sing, the newest member of the church. Jonathan? Them. I'm so glad <laughs> to have everybody with us today. And what I want to preach on today is not one of my regular sermons, brothers and sisters. We have an event coming up that, that needs some attention. We need to be aware of the spiritual and the biblical aspects of what's fixed to happen on the 8th of April. Because what this is, a cosmic, supernatural, super spiritual event that God presents to his, his nations periodically. And we're fixing to be right smack dab in the middle of one of them. That's going to be the total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. And it's something I want to tell you right up front. Do not be afraid. Do not be scared. Do not be hesitant because we're, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And these eclipses, uh, <clears throat> what I want to say is sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, God will give an eclipse to prepare us or culminate a judgment. And that's just the way it is. And then He's been this way for, for years and years and years and centuries and, and forever. But it's intriguing to me to see what's going to happen here in the next few weeks. Let me go forward and pray right quick, Father. <coughs> I pray you in Jesus' name that uh, what you're giving me here and the words of other scholars that I study with and study the, the Word in the Bible and the Scriptures, that this is the truth from you. you. You created all of it, Father. But let me present it through you, your words, and your, all your ideas of what we should be looking for and how we should be preparing, preparing for and how we should all repent, repent, repent in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just for us, Father, but for our nation and for this world. I ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, the biblical connection to this eclipse is also preeminent to the return of Jesus Christ, the second coming. And I don't know how many more we'll have. There should be some, but this one is especially important because it comes right over the United States of America. Right over our great nation. Israel and the United States are God's chosen nations. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm not claiming to know exactly what, what all of it is, but I think it's important enough for, for us to be aware that this is happening and we need to pray for wisdom in this area of the eclipse that's coming over us. It's special for us. Is presented to us. So please do not fear. Just keep in your mind and in your heart and your soul what God is telling us. Okay? On April the 8th, there's going to be an eclipse. And one singular eclipse is pretty amazing, isn't it? It's one. And this one's going to be total. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Total, not partial, not half. Total in the middle of the day. And it's going to, I'm going to tell you about three parts of this. It has so much meaning behind it. It's important to know that God said, God said He would use the sun and the moon and the stars to communicate with us. That's in the Scripture. I'm not going to preach to y'all anything that's not in the Scripture. Okay? God's words are the truth. The truth will set you free. Jesus is coming back. His second return to set us free. Okay, now in Genesis, when all this started, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, brothers and sisters, God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs for four seasons, 
for a season, not four, four seasons, four days, and four years. Specific purpose in his creationalism, right? And then we go to Luke 21, 25. Luke 21, 25. It states in that book, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. So it's not going to be a quiet event all over the world. There's going to be some major things happening. There's going to be blessings. There's also going to be catastrophes. There's going to be buildings. There's also going to be things being taken down. God's judgment is going to pass over His nation, brothers and sisters, and we're all going to be a part of this somewhere, somehow. And uh, so you know that God said He would use the sun, the moon, and the stars to communicate. Well, let's break it down, like I said. There's three parts to this, 2017, 2023, and 2024, where I'm going to go with it. With the path of the last eclipse, eclipse combined with the first two, uh, one in 2017, and I said, with the path of this last, not that last, this last one, okay? It'll, it will create the Hebrew letter over America that is called the Aleph Tav, Tav. And do y'all know what the Tav is? That's the best biblical, it's a Hebrew letter that's going to be over our nation. And it's, it's shaped like a name, but also there's a cross in there. And it means the Alpha and the Omega. That's what the tab is, okay? It means the beginning and the end. Alice tab is like his signature. That's God's personalized signature of the tab over his nations. That's coming over us, brothers and sisters. How great that is, how great thou art. Amen? Amen. Why would he use an eclipse to put his signature over our country, America? Well, let's just kind of do it like the chickens up and go. We'll do scratch and see if we can find the right bugs. Who's laughing over there? I know who it was. I'm, in my, I'm a country boy. I like these examples. But he's used eclipses to warn nations of coming judgment. Now let's get back down to some serious talk right here. And he does that so the nation can repent of their sinful ways and come back to him. This is what happened in the story of Nineveh. Y'all remember Nineveh and Jonah? When God told him to you, you go to go to Nineveh, you preach to these people because I'm fixing to take them out. I'm not happy with them. They're sinful people and they're going to be destroyed if you don't go preach to them. And, J and Jonah said, uh-uh. I ain't having none of that. I can just imagine God sitting on the throne with told one of his angels, hold my scepter and watch this. Because Jonah was taught and he, he was shown that he better go to Nineveh. Because he'd run the other way. But, it just so happened, he started coming back. He's thinking about it. He got on the ship. And that ship started tossing and turning in the ocean. And it's, it started being, I mean, it looked like a wreck. Somebody's fixing to sink and the sailors were all worried. Well, Jonah knew what it was. That was judgment getting a little, God's judgment on him. He tells the captain, he said, I know why there's storms here. Because I've rebelled against God. He said, I just, I just seen him be chunked over. But they did it. They chunked him over the side and the water's calmed. But just about that time, when the water's calmed, there was a giant fish, a great fish. It doesn't say well in the Bible. It says great fish. Come swimming up and, and swallowed him. Oh. He was in the belly of that fish for three days. That's a lot of time to think, isn't it? And then, you know, you don't think about nothing being fishy. You're thinking about God. He's thinking, well, the fish gets up close to the close to the edge of the shoreline, and spits him out. He makes it to the town of Nineveh. And he says, okay, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. He preaches to them. He walks in there and tells them. He said, Jonah, go to the wicked nation of Nineveh and warn them about the coming judgment. And brother and sister, we've got a coming judgment on this country right here. We do. There's no getting out of it. We do. And Jonah ran away from the sun while out in the sea got swallowed up, like I told you, by a giant fish for three days. Well, he repented of running away so the whale spit him out. He went to Nineveh, and here, here it is. He warned the people there was something about to happen. In the 19th century, ancient tablets were discovered that described an eclipse called the Burr 
see Galilee over there. How about that? It was a total eclipse that landed right over Nineveh while Jonah was there preaching. And he was preaching that you got 40 day warning. That's all God's given you. 40 days before the coming destruction. Because of this, the people realized this was a sign from God and the, the eclipse. And, Jonah, and God, Jonah was saying it was true. They, they seen it. They felt it. They, they believed it. And what did they do, brothers and sisters? They repented. Hallelujah. And God spared their nation. What does that remind you of in the Scripture that I read so much and tell you about? Look up on that right there. It says 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, 15. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek, seek my face and turn, that's the thing, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and glory. Hallelujah. I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, my heart, my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Woo. Have we done Second Chronicles 7 14 for our nation? All of us? Have you also prayed that, that recited that scripture and prayed to God for repentance of yourself? For your family? Because hard time we ain't seen nothing yet. Hard times are coming. But when you have repentance and you give yourself to God, He pulls you out of that mire and the mud. He saves you from a destruction that you really deserve, but through His grace and His love, He takes you out of it. Right, brother? Amen. We have some people in this church that have been to the bottom and they're coming back up. Amen. When you're down so long in the bottom, so down deep, there's only way up. You reach out to Jesus Christ and hallelujah, He'll grab you by the hand and lift you up. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Amen? Amen? It's amazing how much Americans mirror do the same thing as the, as the people of Nineveh. It just blows my mind. It's like if you don't see it, you may be a part of the problem if you don't see that right now. And to make it even more clear, this, this coming eclipse on April 8th will be going over seven, get this, seven cities in America and one in Canada. And guess what the name of them seven cities are if this eclipse is going to start traveling going through? Nineveh. How amazing is that, brother and sister? How prophetic is that that he's doing it? I honestly don't know that we had any city in the U.S. named that, but here we are with this eclipse going over them cities. And there'll be an eighth one that goes over uh, close to Quebec, Canada. What's that city called? Nineveh. God is awesome, amen. amen. He has a pre-planned order for everything. And, uh, and here's the cities. Nineveh, Texas. Nineveh, Missouri. Nineveh, Indiana. And when it hits Indiana, that's going to be the highest magnitude of the eclipse. And it'll be, uh, magnitude is 1.023. The local time predicted to occur is 307. Now numbers are important also in the Bible. Threes. Seven. Seven is perfect number. So that's something we'll talk about a little bit more, but that's I want y'all to research the importance of God's numbers in His Bible. Next, it'll go to Nineveh, Ohio, then Nineveh, Pennsylvania, Nineveh, New York, Nineveh, Virginia. I got Virginia first, then New York, and then it'll go to Nova Scotia. I said Quebec a while ago, Nova Scotia, Canada. Well, what does Nineveh? kind of mean. Have you ever wondered what the, where the name come from? It's a house of fish. It's the largest of all the Neo-Assyrian Empire and the world for many decades. It was a grand, great city of trade for many decades. And it was abandoned in 612 B.C. Had 120,000 people in the city of Nineveh. Mm. See what, could this be that God is warning us just as He warned Nineveh with His approaching eclipse. Do y'all think that? Yeah. Have you felt that? Have you wondered that? Yeah. Everything is possible and many things are probable with God and His prophetic words. There have been many Jonahs in the past few years warning the nation we need to repent and add this sign above our heads. We can't turn away from a fact it's not just a coincidence. Amen? 
If you need more proof, I'm fixing to give you a little bit. The first part of this, this three-part eclipse was in 2017. The path of that eclipse went over seven cities. Now this is the first part, 2017, it went over Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, Salem, South Carolina. Seven cities, one place, seven cities, another place. And there is no town ever as biblical as Jerusalem. Where does Salem come? The last part of Jerusalem. Salem. In Hebrew, Jeru, it means God will lift. It will flow. Isn't that something? That's a blessing. And Salem means complete and whole. God will lift and make whole. Whew! I love it. <clears throat> Man. The mathematical. The mathematical chance all you teachers out there can cipher this. I, I can't go that high. The mathematical chance of there being seven Salem's in the first and seven Nineveh's in the third eclipse is unthinkable. Yeah. But what about the second part of the eclipse? Perhaps the most striking piece in the second part of the eclipse is the precise, I mean precise on the dot, hmm, how can I say, center line. Yeah. Center line is what it is. And then it, it, where the eclipse path exits the USA directly over Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi means body of Christ. I've known that for a long time, but now it's making sense when you connect the dots of God's plan. It's one of the only towns named like that in the world. Okay? Now let's go back to the upcoming eclipse and dig a little deeper. Jonah. Jonah was given 40 days. Remember I told you? He gave 40 days to repent. 40 day warning and, and, and during the eclipse. And if you look out at our April 8th eclipse and fast forward 40 days, you will get to May 18th from April 18th. What is May 18th, brothers and sisters? Do you all know? It's the day before Pentecost. Biblical again, amen. Dot, dot, dot lines connecting. The history of the Pentecost is that it's the last spring fest that the Lord has given us. There's four in the spring and three in the fall. Okay? This is the day the Lord sent the Holy Spirit down to all those who have accepted Christ. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to ask you, have you accepted Christ? Yes. Very important. If you have not, please come to me later. Yes. Or come to me now. We'll stop this whole shivery. Because accepting Christ is the only way you'll have eternal salvation. Amen. Eternal life. Eternal living. Free from bondage yes. and slavery. Free from pain and torture. Amen? Yes. We're told that the restrainer during this may be, many believe it's the Holy Spirit will be removed before the tribulation. I believe that too. Before the trip happens. Could it be that's the warning for that? Yeah. I don't know, but I'm, I'm probably thinking it may be. Amen. I'm not sure it's a worldwide event and this eclipse will be just over North America, but it's definitely something to think about. Because who created the rest of the world? God. No matter what, there's too many things lining up for it to be nothing. Too many things. And it's coming. It's coming April the 8th to a theater near you. That's what God calls His land and country, I think, the theater theaters. So my, my job is to get it out to you so you can at least be aware of the signs that God's given us and we can pray about it. Without prayer, we have no ammunition. Without prayer, we have no weapons. We have the body, we have the armor of God, but you have to have prayer, faith, belief. Amen? Amen. Well, from the start of this three-part eclipse to the end, it will be seven years. That's the number seven, perfect number. Uh, God uses numbers a lot to communicate with us, and seven, the number seven has tons of meaning. A few examples are He created the, the world in how many days? And there will be how many years in the tribulation? Seven. And seven is used for completion. Woo! I like this, y'all. Going back to how this correlates with Jonah and Nineveh's story, at the time of the eclipse, there will be another sign in the sky that will take place under the constellation Cetus. Now, I believe in the constellations God, He created the stars, the planets, the constellations for a reason. 
It's not just to sit out there in science class and look at himself. I think I see the difference. He made these for a reason, brothers and sisters. And uh, Cetus is the whale constellation. And not only will this eclipse pass through the, the seven cities in North America and one in Canada, it will also pass through a place called Jonah, Texas. Oh, how odd is that? Woo! It's not odd, it's God. Odd and God are two different things, amen? Speaking of the other towns it'll pass through, here's some of the other city names that'll go right over. Now this is just, it may be just, I'm almost swallowing my cookies. Rapture, Indiana. I had me a cup of coffee in Norio. <laughs> I should have put one of them down when I seen that. Rapture, Indiana. Williamson, Kentucky. It's going right over that town. That's where the Ark Encounter is located. Amen? Some of y'all been there, right? The Ark Encounter is a full-size replica of Noah's Ark. Now, here's one that's near and dear to my heart. My little bride sitting back there. I bet she knows where this is. Eagle Pass, Texas. When this eclipse comes out of Mexico, where's the first place it's going to hit on the Texas coast? Eagle Pass, Texas. That's where we're having right now so many border yeah. trouble issues. Amen? Amen. There's, there's dilemma there. There's, there's trials. There, there's tribulation right there in Eagle Pass. At this point where it crosses the, the 2017 eclipse mark to the center of the X, I tell you, Bart, that's going to be in a town in Illinois called Little Egypt. Yeah. Wow. Or don't you think God knows what He's doing? Yeah. What's even more fascinating is that little Egypt is sandwiched in between two other cities. Now, you heard me say this in the beginning of all this. Alpha, Kentucky, and Omega, Illinois. Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. Woo! Does that give y'all goosebumps? It should, brothers and sisters. Both having the 2017 eclipse come over their cities. Furthermore, the intersection of 2017 and 2024 solar eclipse occurs directly over the New Madrid fault line. Wow. It, it is a major seismic zone. Earthquake possibility. You know, we, we talks about earthquakes, wars. Keep it in mind now. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. We have God. We have it all. We have Jesus. We have protection. An earthquake along the fault line, if that happened, it could destroy the United States. Make it one of the most perilous fault lines in the country. And I don't have any idea this will happen or not. Only God knows timing. Only God. Angels don't know. Jesus don't know. I don't know. But God knows. And He's going to have timing one day. He's going to go, Son, get it. There's too many things in here just flat, literally lining up not to share with everybody. One more interesting fact. There's 2,000 422 days in between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse. Hmm. If you look up 2422 at Strong's Concordance on Bible Concord or Bible Concordance that has every word of the King James Version takes us to Exodus 119. This is super right here. Exodus 119. And it says the midwives answered Pharaoh. Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They're vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Why would this be of any significance? You, you might ask. Well, to me, it reminds me of how Jesus said that His return would be like a woman in labor. Yeah. Mm. With the signs of His coming growing stronger and stronger and growing closer together, the pain, birth pains of play. Amen? We're all at a point in history where we're, we're seeing all the signs that He gave us happening right before our very eyes, brothers and sisters. This is wonderful. I'm excited. Come, Jesus, come. Right now would be soon enough for me. In fact, we're seeing things that will happen during the tribulation getting set up right now. As we're preaching and, 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 and like the Bible says we would be doing. But we're, getting, we're seeing them getting set up. If we're seeing those things being set up now, it must mean we're just be we're getting super close to it happening. Amen. 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 I'm I'm so tickled I can't hold it standing. I was back I was walking the floor back there. I thought Ernest Tubbs was the only one that said, I'm walking the floor. I'm walking for the Lord. I'm excited, I'm tense, I'm happy. I'm just I'm looking forward to God's events coming to us. Mm. 
going back to God saying that he uses the sun, the moon, and the star to show us signs. And Jesus saying the signs of his coming will be like a woman in labor. Well, this information leads us back to Exodus 1.19, explaining that the Hebrew women have labor so fast it's so interesting to me. Could we be on the brink of the rapture and tribulation? I don't know. We could be. We may not be. God knows the time. I don't know exactly when it happened, but Jesus did tell us we know the season. Amen? Amen. And I believe we've been in the season for the past few years and we're pushing closer and closer and closer to it. So what do you do with all this information? Enjoy. It is no secret what God has done. Listen, it's no secret that this world has gone mad. And everybody knows that there's something happening. Everybody, all y'all sitting out here in the congregation, that you know something's happening. You can feel it. You can sense it. You know God's on the move. And behind the scenes, that feels uncomfortable for some. Not me, brother and sister. I'm happy and joyous. Because I'm aware, I'm unafraid, I'm getting more knowledge as we stand here today. And if you have that feeling, you're right, there's a major push for things happening. And that were predicted to happen, 2,000 years ago. Most people seek their understanding in the wrong place. They're looking for answers in the wrong places, brothers and sisters. They look to the news and to this world to give it to them. Wrong place to be looking because these sources will only bring more questions and not answers. They lead you on. They lie to you. That's the enemy. Satan's still doing his work that he done in the garden. And he's got a bunch of them by the by the ears right now. If it causes people to live, this is what I don't like, in fear. It causes people to live in anxiety and depression. Amen? God, the enemy will do that. Satan says, I've got you. I've got you. God says, turn him loose if you take him as your savior. Jesus don't want us to live that way. He gave us information so we know what's happening when we see these things that we are seeing now. Amen? Amen? The first piece of living is His knowledge and accepting that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And on the third day, there's a number three again. On the third day, Jesus rose from the grave and conquered death. And the second piece is the most important of all. And every single person sitting here today, I want you to think about this. Repent! As it said in Second Chronicles, repent from the sins of your life. Repent from anything that's, that just turns you away from God. Idolize in anything like drugs, alcohol, pornography, all that stuff. We've talked about this many times. Repent. Repent for the day is near. I was John the Baptist. We're sitting down here with that tub full of water. And we have to repent, brothers and sisters. If you don't repent, you're going to go right back to where you was. If you don't repent and take Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will not go to heaven. Period. Amen. Stomping toes now. I don't know if I'm stomping toes. I, I need to if you haven't taken Jesus as your Savior. Now, most churches only teach how God loves you. But they don't teach repentance anymore. I can't believe it. That's a huge part of your faith, brothers and sisters. Jesus said there will be many who come to Him and say, and I know we've had them in this church, other churches before, Lord, Lord, I, I knew You. But because they didn't repent of their sin, they knew of God, they don't know God, they knew of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus because He hadn't been able to get into their heart and left them from the bondage of the slavery that they're in, brothers and sisters. And He will reply, Get away from me. I never knew you. I don't know you. I don't want to hear those words. I've got my relationship with God. You've got to have your relationship with God, brothers and sisters. I've been tense all morning. This is what it comes down to right here. We can't live however we want to without any consequences. Amen? Excuse me. Even little children understand this concept. But it's been lost on most adults. It's been lost. Just turn turn away from God. Do what you want to do. Come to church on Sunday morning. Turn the show on, on one day a week. On the, on the, that's not living for God. That's giving Him lip service. 
That's saying you're a Christian, but you're not walking as a Christian, brothers and sisters. Because they were self-serving. This is why Nineveh was fixed to get destroyed. This is why God was going to seek destruction on them. They were a self-serving, sinful nation, just like America is today. Amen. Amen? You can't change the heart of this nation, but you can change your heart and lead your homes to do that. That's what I'm talking about. Men, every man in here, you're the spiritual leader of your home. You are the, you're, you're God's chosen man to be with your family to lead your home. Living in sin ain't going to cut it. Getting in the Word of God, understanding how much He loves you, understanding the marching orders He gives for us, understanding the steps to take to have your family in holiness. Holiness. You're not going to be the Pope. You don't want to try to be. That's evil. But if you want to be with God, you need to be holy as you can, righteous as God. Amen. Amen. And you're not going to walk. You're not going to walk in on, on golden paths all the time. You're going to stumble and fall. But Jesus Christ will pick you up. He says He will. His promises are promises kept, brothers and sisters. You can't change the heart of this nation. Change your self and your family and your homes. And third, pray for wisdom in these areas that I've talked to you about. I only know this has been, it's been in deep. I haven't been up here long, but it's been incredibly deep. And just like Proverbs 25.2 says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Do I need to read that again? Mm -mm -mm. Proverbs 25.2 It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. This sign in the sky will be right over our heads in just a few weeks. Now, Will you use the eyes you have to see what this event is going to be? Amen? Solar total eclipse. Going to be about four, four and a half minutes long. And you know when that eclipse happens, this is a spiritual thing. And I'm believing it's, it's God showing us right up front in our face. When that moon covers the sun, it's going to cover and you're going to see a glow around the whole thing. A fiery glow. You know what that's called? That's called the corona. What is corona? That's a crown. This is biblical, brothers and sisters. It's important. And Texas is going to be right, right, it's going to ride over us. I'm going to say, repent. Repent for our nation. As 2 Chronicles 7, 14, God tells us. He's not just telling me. He's not just telling me. He's telling y'all. He's telling the whole nation. Repent. And uh, think about this. Six, six years, six months, and six days later, another eclipse crosses the U.S. after that 2023 20, one called Little Egypt. Went right over Little Egypt. Over seven cities named Nineveh and USA and Canada. Seven Salem, seven Nineveh. I'm fixing to close this out. The sign of Jonah the prophet to repent. Turn and burn. I like that part. We, know, we got enough cowboy and barrel racers in us and rode a turn and burn. Turn from sin or burn in hell. Amen. God's got you. Just don't let go. Don't let go. Hang on to Him. Brothers and sisters, are we up for a civil war? Yes. We could be. You know, our state and our federal government, we could have a civil war as it talks about in the Bible. You're going to hear of wars, rumors of wars. There'll be wars. Is civil war coming? Well, some of them say you can't do this and some of them say you watch me. Civil war is imminent in this. And we have to make a choice. Freedom or slavery? Amen. Freedom or slavery, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ. With Him in our hearts. Freedom. Jesus is within me and I am within Him. Yes. Jesus is coming to set people free and it says to be in the air where eagles gather. The heavens are being shaken, y'all. The heavens are being shaken above us as we're sitting here this morning. Joel 3.16. We know John 3.16, but listen to what Joel 3.16. It is the voice of God that causes the heavens to shake. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our God, the most awesome God. God's speaking to you now. He's speaking to all of us. He's speaking to His nation through this big event that's coming. Now hear this. I'm going to close with this statement. 
The church can survive without America, but America cannot survive without the church. Amen. 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 Strongest statement I can make. Stand up and make sure you're in covenant with God. Stand up and, and make sure your heart's right with Him. And <coughs> not on the wrong side of things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank You so much for this strong message, this strong word You have for us today. Things are coming at us fast, Father. They're coming at a, at a run. Let us be prepared. We know now through Your words and Your message, Father, what to look for. We know now with, the, with Jesus inside of us and Jesus leading us, we can, we can win this battle that's coming. We can bring salvation back to our country, your nation, Father, and ask in the name of Jesus that that is accomplished through your Son, through us, seeking your face, through this nation, humbling and repenting, repenting from our sins, turning away from our sins, walking with you, Father. I pray this in your precious precious name Jesus Christ our King of Kings our Lord of Lords our Savior in your name Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Y'all come back next Sunday Easter Sunday and we're going to have a message for that that just gives Him the glory Amen, Amen. Thank you